Cape Talk. Pippers on Twitter. You can tweet her at PJC Hudson. We've had many conversations over the years about the decline of the SA Post Office and sadly the situation has only deteriorated since the last one. Uh, just to fill you in, as of the end of March, the Post Office owed creditors around 5 billion rand. It's already under provisional liquidation and the National Department of Communications has now applied to the High Court in Pretoria to have the state-owned enterprise placed under business rescue, uh, obviously trying to avoid uh, the possibility that it must be closed down entirely. So we're a couple of weeks away from that court application. I believe it's the 3rd or 4th of July or so that that is going to be heard. Um, For those asking what's going on with branches, look, for now, it's not that every branch is closed, but their numbers are dwindling because what is happening is that the landlords who own the properties where those post offices are located are starting to lock the doors because the rent hasn't been paid. Uh, The last time we got an official update on the stats, October last year, Johan Kruger, the head of communications uh, for the SA Post Office at the time, stated that there were still roughly 1,200 post offices that were functioning. We know that that number has dropped um, to about 1,100 since then, and at least 50 of those closures were due to unpaid rent. It was landlords simply saying, sorry, you don't come back until you've paid the, the rent. So a very, very serious situation um, and uh, with lots of ramifications, obviously ramifications for the payment of social grants. As Henry points out, ramifications for those who want to get recreational fishing permits. Where do you go if your local post office has been closed down and you want to legally comply with the requirements before you go crayfishing or collecting bait, etc.? Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen with the permits, Henry. I think for now the answer is you find a post office near you that is still open. It might not necessarily any longer be a convenient one, but that is where you can get those permits. I'm not aware of anybody else uh, having them at this point. What we do want to talk about today is what are your options if you want to use the other services that you would once have relied on the post office for, namely sending a letter or a parcel. Where are we left as South Africans if we've got to get something sent from A to Z? With me on the line to discuss is Jan Vermeer, an editor at My Broadband. He and his team have been doing ongoing research on this issue and looking at the alternative options and what you can do at what kind of cost. And I thought it would be helpful to chat to Jan just to get a broad picture of who people are turning to. It's always so lovely to have you on the show, Jan. Welcome back. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, when I needed to send an official document to the UK last year sometime, my only option in the end was to pay 500 rand to send a single A4 page by courier. It was painful, Jan. It hurt, but there was no other way to do it. I could not trust putting that document into the mail because I simply knew it would never get there. Um, that was one person and one page. What does a small business do that used to use the post office to send all of its deliveries out? They can't afford to pay 500 rand for every delivery. So what do they do? Yeah, and, and if you are going international, then, then things get complicated. Yeah. So, so local within South Africa's borders, there's still solutions. But internationally, the weak rand is going to really hurt you badly. Yeah. And, um, but, but domestically, um, there's, there's all kinds of things. And you can, for, for a small business, um, so for an individual, it's a different kettle of fish. But yeah. for a small business, you sign a contract with a, a courier partner, and that gets you a certain amount of deliveries per month at a certain rate. Yeah. And so um, those, uh, the, those options are available to, to small businesses, and, and they can be actually quite affordable. Now, it's for, for sending a single page, um, it's unfortunately, it's unfortunately not great, yeah. and so it's almost um, in in that sense. Uh, I think it's going to force South Africa to digitise fast yeah. for yeah. anybody that hasn't already, as a result of the pandemic. And um, so, if you're if you're still moving paper around um, something like a postal system, then uh, the, the switching to to email and PDFs and uh, and the security um, that that those can provide digital signatures and the like yeah. is probably going to be that business's um, uh, only option, only affordable option, I should say. Yeah. Uh, because if you're moving by private courier things around, um, you're, you're paying uh, upwards of, of 50 rand uh, per parcel. Um, uh, that, that's now, you know, without a contract or anything like that, yeah. it, it could probably be a lot less if uh, if you're signing a contract and, and you're moving a lot of volume. Um, and then, of course, you know, there's always services like PostNet, um, but but PostNet doesn't have nearly the footprint 
yeah. that the post office has. Um, and uh, for some of its services, it's reliant on the post office. Oh, so you, you, so you, will, you will need to go for a postnet to postnet service, which is necessarily um, going to be slightly more expensive. Not, not a, necessarily uh, a lot more expensive, but it, it's, it's not going to be uh, the same price as the, as the post office. So there's no like drop in replacement um, for yeah. for the post office when it comes to uh, just everything, but for parcels um, and and uh, sort of larger deliveries like that, um, certainly uh, the private sector has really stepped in to fill that gap because there's quite a bit of money to be made there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Jan, you're seeing these offerings springing up all over the place, the likes of the Pargos and the Pudos and several yes. people on our WhatsApp line saying how reliable the Pep Store service is. I think that's called Paxi, yes. if I'm not mistaken, yeah. where you can drop off your parcel at your local Pep Store and have it delivered yeah. to another Pep Store and they've got a huge footprint, don't they? Yes, exactly. So once again, not quite the size of the post office because yeah. the post office has the benefit of being funded by a tax brands um but uh but yes i mean uh, can you can you imagine a small town in this country without a pet yeah. um so uh it's 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 a it's a it's a uh, an institution with a massive footprint and uh, and that certainly helps and, and pick and pay as well have partnered with a a um with with one of these uh, uh courier companies and they do um uh you know, parcel pickups from uh, the pick and pay branch and then can take it you know, to a pickup point, so either to a a locker of some sort, or to um, it can be a, a two door delivery for for slightly more money, yeah. and and so on. So there's 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 um, really a, a lot of options if you're willing to spend say fifty rand upwards. Um, for for getting something delivered. Okay, let me just share a couple of the messages coming in from listeners. Uh, One saying, I can highly recommend Pep Stores for posting a parcel. They have a very efficient one to three day service and an even cheaper five to seven day service. They constantly keep you updated via SMS as to where your parcel is, when it arrives and once it's been delivered. Uh, Somebody else saying, we're in Sunningdale and uh, Bloberg area. Our Pep at Home post uh, offers a very reasonable alternative. And then Gail says, saying you can still send mail to the UK from Postnet. They work with British Mail. I've used them before and they are reliable. All my mail does get to the UK on time. So that's a nice one to know about if you still want yeah, to send I letters. Yeah, I know about that one. Uh, thanks, yeah. Gail, for, for tipping us off. I believe we've got a caller on the line who wants to chat to us about courier options. Uh, thanks for calling in, Sally, in the City Bowl. Good afternoon. Hi, Pippa. Um, I export a lot of stuff um, locally and overseas, yeah. and I have found the courier guy is amazing in South Africa. He's half the price of a lot of other people. Okay. And then I use Jetlog Logistics for overseas. They are incredible. They give you a price within the hour, and they pick up the same day, and their prices are a lot cheaper than a lot of other people. Okay, so Jetlog for overseas and courier guy for local. Yeah, Jetlog Logistics for overseas and the courier guy locally. That's brilliant. And some questions from my yeah. side. Um, so where do you ship to? I ship all over. I ship Australia, New Zealand, Germany, Middle East, America, England. That's that's amazing because that's uh, that's been a huge gap in, in uh, South Africa's market um, for for people who are you know launching uh, whether whether it's merch you know if you're if you're say on a social media influencer or something like that and you want to sell some merch you, you're kind of locked into yeah. either using the American options um, uh, because we, we haven't had um, you know services like these so that, that's actually a very good tip thank you very much and he also does um, a lot of artwork so anything any amazing artwork. Um um, artwork or anything he um, packs and sends overseas. He is incredible. Sally, thank That's you great. so much for those tips. That's really appreciated. Again, for those who missed it, a courier guy locally and Sally recommending Jetlog Logistics for overseas deliveries and a very broad spectrum of overseas deliveries by the sound of it. So that's really good to know. Jan, what about the other way around? I mean, I remember the days when, for example, you couldn't order anything on Amazon because they couldn't deliver via the SA post office. Are we still in that predicament or are the overseas markets waking up to the fact that there are private operators stepping into the space? Yeah, so so Amazon, uh, uh, unless you are going to using a third party merchant that for some reason isn't plugged into a career company um, and, and rely on their country's uh, mail provider, you know, yeah. whether it's the, the UK mail or, or the USPS, um, they all use private couriers now. So yeah. if you buy direct from Amazon, from, from an Amazon listed, so a product that Amazon itself is actually selling, not yeah. a third party merchant, that is being couriered. 
And, and Amazon's process for that is actually fantastic. It's seamless. Um, so it, that, that has become the gold standard for, for any kind of, of company wanting to do business into South Africa, I think, to live up to, because they also handle the customs for you. Um, I remember, uh, you know, uh, many moons ago, I uh, imported um, uh, the Google smartphones. Yep. Back when they were still called Nexus phones, they nowadays are called Pixel, and um, and uh, trying to get those into South Africa was a massive undertaking because you had to manage the customs yourself. Um, you, had, you know, uh, pay the, the the courier would facilitate the payment and stuff, yep. but eventually, like um, you know, some of them came through no problem. But in the one case, I actually had a customs official call me up on the phone and going. Hey, what's going on here? Why did you buy four phones? Yeah, um, you know, because because now it looks like I don't know, like I'm I'm trying to import on the sly, I guess, uh-huh. without, without paying Thanks. the necessary Jeez, um, taxes. Yeah. Um, and and I'm like, no, look, it's you know, two friends, my wife, you know, and me, uh, and and he's like, oh, okay, and and all, out, out out of customs it comes. Um, but Amazon now handles that whole process for you with the courier. They quote you the customs price ahead of time. It'll never be more than that. So they, 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 they do an estimate of the duties you're going to pay on the items you order. Um, if, if, it, if it comes out to more than that, they take the knock. If it yeah. comes out to less than that, they refund you. Sure. So you only you can only win, um, and so that that's been that's been a, a for for lightweight items, Amazon works beautifully. But but once again, once you start dealing with heavier goods, um, it, it can get quite expensive because yeah. private courier. Private, privately couriering heavy items is expensive because you tend to pay by weight. Okay, thanks for that explanation. Uh, I'm loving this message. Somebody saying, I saw the postman in my neighborhood yesterday for the first time in months. The post he delivered came from the UK. It had been posted in December last year. And she also comments he or she, that also the postman doesn't have a bicycle anymore. He now gets dropped off with a bucky in our area. You know, you've reminded me, I haven't laid eyes on our postman in forever. Forever. I can't remember the last time I got an actual piece of mail into my mailbox, but I, I certainly haven't seen him around. And yeah, I mean, the job losses associated with the closure of all of these post offices are, are really, really extreme. Jan, I mean, a lot of people are asking about all the sort of associated functions the post office used to fulfill, the fishing permits uh, and, and the like. Uh, what about traffic fines, asks Barris. He says he's been getting WhatsApps, but he doesn't feel that comfortable with WhatsApps. He always right. felt that the one coming from the post office seemed more legitimate. Uh, any yes. advice for somebody in that position? Um, no, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. for legal reasons, okay. uh, <laughs> I prefer not to not to give advice on on um, how or whether to pay your traffic fines. Um, but generally, um, speaking broadly about the the, the loss of that uh, footprint yeah. that government now has, so what what, what government is now doing with uh, passports and and um, IDs, for example which is a home affairs function in, in yeah. fairness, not a post office function, but they are partnering with banks to, uh-huh. to offer because that, that's something with, that's, that's quite a yeah. high level of security. And so it makes sense to partner with the bank. But for fishing permits and that sort of thing, you can imagine that them, that government, once again, might end up partnering with a private sector, like a PEP, like a pick and pay, like a shop right. Um, you know, uh, a kind of operator with an outlet in every town yeah. and uh, in, in the country. But then you, now you, what you are losing are those loss-making uh, outlets that were, that were maybe in villages and stuff, that, that were not in small towns, but even smaller villages that, that might have had a post office, yeah. but, will, but might not have their own pick-and-pay shop right or, or pep store. And so those folks will now have to make the trek into town to 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 do their administrative stuff, yeah. um, and and that's a, that's a huge loss to the country. And as you say, um, even now with the rationalisation of the post office, what government is proposing in its business rescue plan is a culling of staff, and yeah. and it shows you just how bloated the staff complement at these state-owned institutions became. They became essentially job creation vehicles for government, and and they've paid the price because they they bloated these organisations to the point where they became wholly ineffective. Um, and and now they're talking about laying off seven thousand. Um, uh, uh, or you know, it's essentially seventy percent of the staff yeah. at the post office to to just to make it work under business rescue. Um, and th- and that's that's to try and save it. Um, so then you still then have at least a few thousand people who will have jobs, but many many more thousands who are going to lose their jobs as a result.
That is the sad reality. Jan Vermeulen, thank you so much. Editor at My Broadband, we always appreciate your contribution on the show and thanks for flagging uh, those private sector options that can step into some of the gaps left by the failure of the post office.